Hello everybody, myself Bahadur Murugan, Aston Professor, working in AC Department, Erol Sengandar Engineering College. Today I am very happy to present a topic in electromagnetic fields. Electromagnetic fields and uh, I am going to present a topic especially coordinate system and this is a very simple and uh, easy topic in electromagnetic fields. This topic is very useful for preparing for gate examinations. So I am very thankful for my HOD for uh, her support and the principal and the management. Shall I, st shall we start the session right now? I start the present slide to start with what is meant by electromagnetics. Electromagnetics, if you take, means it is here uh, two terms. The one is called electric field and other one is called magnetic field. It is an interaction between electric field and magnetic field together. And uh, the electric charges may be in two different positions. One is called rest and the other one is called motion. When the electric fields are rest, the produced electric field is called a static electric field. And when the electric charges are in motion, they are called a dynamic electric field. And the electromagnetic field is a branch of physics uh, or uh, it is a branch of electrical engineering. So we will study electromagnetic in uh, both the fields. Let us uh, see the electromagnetic field applications. It is used in many applications. Why? Because without electric field, without magnetic field, most of the devices right now we are using will not work. For example, you can take a, a mobile phone. In mobile phone, mobile phone will work. Mobile phone will work if you receive only the if it only receive the signal from the antenna so it is a signal receiver which receives electromagnetic waves uh, by means we can communicate with that particular electric field or magnetic field only with the others so here some examples are given like uh, microwaves it is used to heat deep issues in the medical field or and uh, to stimulate certain physiological responses in order to you know relieve certain conditions pathological conditions it is also used in induction heater for so many uh, purposes like uh, melting forging annealing surface hardening and uh, soldering operations uh, there is one equipment called uh, dielectric heating which uses a uh, short wave short waves to you know to join or to separate uh, thin plastic materials together let us see some electromagnetic devices as i said most of the devices which we are using currently uses this particular phenomenon called uh, electromagnetics so for example some examples are given here transformers electric relays radio slash tv uh, telephone, electric motors, transmission lines, waveguides, antennas, optical fibers, radars, and uh, lasers. Okay, as I said, today we are going to see the coordinate system. Still now we have seen what is electromagnetic field and what are the applications of uh, electromagnetic field and uh, practical applications let us see coordinate systems coordinate systems uh, if you see means it will have uh, like one more than one two three axes so in this electromagnetic field we will see the coordinate system with uh, three axes right some examples are given here like uh, Cartesian coordinate system it is also called a rectangular coordinate system, which is very much popular. And the second one is called a circular cylindrical coordinate system. Third one is spherical. These are the main three coordinate systems which we use in electromagnetic field and other systems are also given as an example. Okay. 
coordinate system if you ask what is coordinate system means a point or vector it can be represented in a space right so if we want to represent uh, any vector or any scalar in space means we have to go for the uh, coordinate systems and uh, the axes three axes that are present in each coordinate systems are exactly orthogonal to each other orthogonal means it is perpendicular perpendicular means we also know that uh, the angle difference between the two axes uh, for example in cartesian coordinate system three axes are used are x and y and z the relation angle difference between the two axes x and y are 90 degree that's why they are called orthogonal or uh, perpendicular coordinate system okay let us see the cartesian coordinate system or rectangular coordinate system as i said uh, you know in each coordinate system we will have uh, three axes like this you can see x is here y is here and uh, z is here exactly the angle difference between each axis is 90 degree this is uh, similar the angle difference in all coordinate systems are similar right so they will have a difference of 90 degree if you want to represent a point okay that is called p here right we are going to represent this particular point in cartesian coordinate system so that distance particular distance of this particular point from the three axes x y z are represented here x y and z you see here you take a perpendicular distance it will give you the z value if you draw a parallel line to x it will give you the x value and if you draw a parallel line to y axis which will give you z right and uh, if you take the range for x y z values means it can take from the minus value to the plus value that is called minus infinity to plus infinity it can have any value in between these two limits so and uh, the other axes are y and z similarly they also take the values any values between the limits minus infinity to plus infinity okay now let us see the second coordinate system that is called circular cylindrical coordinate system in this three axes that are present are uh, rho phi z these are the three coordinate coordinates which are used in cylindrical coordinate system here a yeah, part of cylinder is represented in order to explain the uh, coordinate system here we take the p right if we take p means we are going to represent three uh, points that is called uh, first is called a rho and the other is called a phi and the other is called a z right rho phi z so in this one in three axes phi takes the limit from 0 to 2 pi why because it is the angle difference so it will take from 0 to 2 pi if you see here phi is nothing but this particular value so it is a uh, like circle so it will take the angle value from 0 to 360 degree if you take uh, the other one rho is nothing but the distance from the z axis it is called a rho so it can take the value from 0 to infinity it will not take the minus values so it will take from 0 to infinity and the last one is that is similar to the cartesian coordinate system we see last we see the thing as a last so it will take the value from minus infinity to plus infinity fine let us relate the two coordinate systems that is the relation between the Cartesian coordinate system and then the cylindrical coordinate system. So here, rho, phi, z. These are the three coordinates in cylindrical coordinate system. And if you want to convert x, y, z, right? x, y, z, which are Cartesian coordinates, you have to use this particular formula. If you want to find rho, you have to take x squared plus y squared and if you take phi the formula is tan inverse y by x and similarly z equal to z so both the things are similar so these values that means the cartesian values will be given to you 
to write x, y, z. Three values will be given to you and they will ask you to convert all the three values to the other coordinate that is the cylindrical coordinate system right and uh, the reverse thing if the uh, three values rho phi z which are nothing but coordinates in cylindrical system if they ask if they are uh, these values are given and they ask you to convert these values to cartesian means you have to use these formulas for x you will have a rho cos phi and y you will have a rho sine phi and z equal to z. So here, the relation between the two coordinate systems, Cartesian and rectangular, Cartesian and cylindrical coordinate systems are given. So these, this is transformation from Cartesian to cylindrical and this is from cylindrical to Cartesian. Last, the coordinate system is nothing but spherical uh, coordinate system. Here, the coordinates are r, theta, and uh, phi. Here, yes, sphere is taken, and here, uh, out of three coordinates, two values are angle. One is nothing but theta, and the other one is nothing but the phi, and the other is nothing but r, right? So, out of these, theta and phi will take the angle values. So, we will see the limits. Here, for r, you will have from 0 to infinity. And for theta, it is from 0 to pi. And for uh, phi, it is 0 to 2 pi. So out of the three coordinate system, the phi value will remain same as uh, we seen in the cylindrical coordinate system. OK, next we will see the relation between the Cartesian coordinate system and the spherical coordinate system. If the three coordinates are given in Cartesian coordinate system, that means the x value, y value, z value are given, and they ask you to convert all those values to spherical coordinates, that is r, theta, and phi, you have to use these formulas. I will tell the formula individually. For r, you will have a square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared, and for theta, that is equal to tan inverse root of x squared plus y squared uh, divided by z, and for phi, the value is uh, tan inverse y by x, right? If the reverse thing is given, that means r, theta, phi values are given and they ask you to find the Cartesian coordinate means you have to use this formula, x equal to r sine theta cos phi and for y equal to r sine theta sine phi, last one is that equal to r cos theta. So these are the three formulas which will help you to convert the spherical coordinate values into cylindrical coordinate values. Okay, next we will see the formulas for each coordinate system separately. Three formulas we have to see. One is the differential length and the second one is the differential surface and last one is the differential value, right? So here uh, one thing I want to say, sorry, for Cartesian system, D, uh, differential length DL is given by dx ax plus dy ay plus dz az. If you ask dx, dx is nothing but the length in the x direction. Uh, you can see the diagram in x axis. You see here the length in x axis is dx. Okay. And uh, similarly, the length in y axis is dy and the length in the z axis is d z right and the differential length is given by the letter d l and uh, correspondingly the unit vector for x axis the unit vector is a x and for the y axis the unit vector is a y and for the z one the unit vector is a z so here you see in all axes the differential length are multiple by the corresponding unit vectors. For example, if you take x direction, it is dx, ax. And uh, if you take the differential length in y direction, that is dy, ay. And finally, or is it t, is it yz. Then finally, you have to add uh, all the differential length values that will give you dl. Next, we will see the differential surface which is nothing but a two dimensional one. So we have to go for uh, the two axis, right? 
we take this particular plane right the formula is ax vector dy dz if you take this particular plane the differential surface in y direction that is given by y vector dx dz and for the d is it the value is given by z vector dx dy so these are two dimensional values whereas the differential length is a one dimensional value and when finally differential value dv can be found by multiplying the differential length in all the directions that is called dx dy and dz right next the formula for uh, <clears throat> next coordinate system cylindrical coordinate system that is differential length is given by uh, dl equal to d rho a rho plus rho d phi a phi plus d z a z so these formulas you have to mug up why because this will uh, help you to solve the problems right next one is the differential surface uh, differential surface in row direction d s row is given by rho d phi d z a rho d s phi equal to d rho d z a phi d s is it equal to rho d phi d rho a z differential volume dv equal to is nothing but differential length in all the directions so it is rho d rho multiple by rho d phi multiple by d z so this is the differential volume and uh, here if you see means the three different surfaces are given right and then uh, the values like what is rho and what is phi and what is z are given and here you see correspondingly the unit vectors are also given in rho direction a rho in phi a phi in z a z next finally we will see the spherical coordinate system so in differential length dl is given by uh, dr a r plus r d theta a theta plus r sin theta d phi a phi so next one is the differential surface if you take d s r it will be r squared sin theta d theta d phi a r so and in theta d s theta equal to r sin theta d r d phi a theta and for the phi direction it is d s phi equal to r d r d theta a phi finally differential value formula it is r squared sin theta d r d theta d phi and as i said this is the multiplication of uh, differential length in all the directions so till now we have seen what is coordinate system and each coordinate system uh, what is the coordinates that are available and the relation between the coordinate system and in each coordinate system we have seen three formulas uh, the one is for the differential length and other is for differential surface and uh, the last one is differential value right here the point transformation is given for example if they are given a point in one coordinate system and if they ask you to convert that to the other coordinate system what you have to do so for the first thing from cartesian to cylindrical coordinate system cartesian to cylindrical coordinate system the formulas are given here this this all we have seen previously rho equal to square root of x square plus y square that is the first point and the second one phi equal to tan inverse of y by x and finally z equal to z and the second formula from cylindrical to cartesian x equal to rho cos phi and y equal to rho sin phi and z equal to z so these formulas are really important if you want to convert one uh, particular coordinate to the other particular coordinate in other coordinate system next one is the uh, from cartesian to spherical cartesian coordinates are given in the right hand side as formulas and the spherical coordinates r theta phi r are given in the left hand side corresponding formula r equal to root of x square plus y square plus u square and theta equal to cos inverse of z divided by square root of x square plus y square plus u square finally phi equal to tan inverse of y by x and last thing from spherical to cartesian uh the formulas are x equal to r sin theta cos phi y equal to r sin theta sin phi is that equal to r cos theta finally the vector transformations are given as formulas here if you take 
Cartesian to cylindrical. That means three values x, a x, a y, a z. That means a vector is given in Cartesian coordinate. If they ask you to convert that one to cylindrical system, a rho, a phi, a z, you have to use this particular matrix, right? Cos phi sine phi zero minus sine phi cos phi zero 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 one. And then you have to put the values for a x a y a z here and if you multiple these values you will get the vector in cylindrical coordinate system similarly the reverse thing from cylindrical to cartesian if a vector is given in cylindrical you can use this particular matrix to convert that particular vector to the cylindrical vector okay sorry to cartesian vector and the other transformations from Cartesian to spherical, the formulas are given here. From spherical to Cartesian, the formulas are given here. So you can use this particular matrix if you want to convert your vector from one coordinate system to other coordinate system. Remember, this is a vector transformation. Previously, we have seen the transformation that is point, right? This is not point actually, this is a vector transformation. So two different transformations formulas are over. First one, we have seen how to convert a point from one coordinate system to other here. How to convert a vector from one coordinate system to other coordinate system is given. Okay, finally, uh, let us see the two operators are here. One is called a del and the other one is called a curl. curl. For the del operator, the different formulas are given for each coordinate system. For Cartesian coordinate, uh, the symbol for del operator is this one, inverted uh, triangle that is equal to dou by dou x a x plus dou by dou y a y plus dou by dou z a z. And similarly for cylindrical coordinates, the formulas are del equal to dou divided by dou rho into a rho plus 1 divided by rho, dou divided by dou phi into a phi plus dou divided by dou z into a z. And for spherical coordinates, del equal to dou divided by dou r a r plus 1 by r dou divided by dou theta a theta plus 1 divided by r sine theta into dou divided by dou phi into a phi. So if they ask you find what is the value of del, right? For each coordinate system, you have to use this particular formula. Del is an operator, and the other operator we'll see that later. Curl, C U R L. Before that one, we'll see the gradient of a scalar. Previously, we have seen the formula for uh, del for all coordinate system. Here, we will take uh, one more thing. That is the gradient. Gradient of a scalar is a vector. Okay, that represents both magnitude and direction right for the rate of rise of p so what is the difference between the previous formula and this formula means one value is added that is nothing but v right both in the left hand side as in the right hand side so this is for cartesian this is for cylindrical and this is for spherical right if you see in each term v is added right in the right hand side so similarly in the left hand side v also given here right if you take gradient right of del that will give you vector right so which will have magnitude and uh, direction okay let us see the other one divergence divergence is nothing but uh, a yeah, particular point right that will give you outward flux per unit volume right uh, this is similar to if you take a water, if you take a water flow in a pipe, right? Water goes in a pipe. If you put a hole on that, the water will come out in all directions. So that is nothing but uh, divergence of A. So if you take del dot A, the formula is limit. Del V tends to zero. Uh, it's nothing but surface integral. A vector dot ds vector divided by del V. So this is nothing but the volume in which we are going to calculate the divergence. This is nothing but the vector for which we are going to calculate the divergence. And uh, this is nothing but surface integral.
surface integral means uh, you have to you know the formula for a differential area in uh, different axes so you have to use that one particularly next divergence theorem divergence the divergence theorem is nothing but it states that the total outward flux okay of a vector field a right through a closed surface is same as the volume integral of divergence of a right we will see the equation here you can see the left hand side right hand side left hand side is nothing but volume integral right of divergence of a particular vector that is nothing but del dot a right what is the volume integral you have to put dv okay this one is equal to surface integral of that particular vector surface integral of that particular vector only the condition is the surface must be a closed one this is nothing but divergence theorem next divergence of a vector as i have already said if your water close in a pipe if you put a hole on that one the water will come in all directions that is called divergence this one we will see the three different uh, type of divergence positive divergence if the direction of field is outwards right from a point charge p and if it is negative divergence negative divergence in the sense right uh, it will go inwards right towards that particular charge but a zero divergence means it will present uh, in between uh, that means all the lines will go in the upward direction and the charge will be present in between that is called a zero divergence these are all the different type of divergence of a particular point next we will see the curl of a vector we have we must see two vectors the two operators of a vector first one is the divergence and now we will see the other operator that is nothing but curl c o r l c o r l is simply nothing but your rotational rotation of a vector is nothing but curl so if you see the exact definition the curl of a vector is an ac axial or rotational vector whose magnitude is maximum circulation of a per unit area right tends to zero and uh, whose direction is always normal to that particular area that means if you take a particular area and if you are going to take a curl on that particular point in that particular surface it will be always in the perpendicular direction that is given us normal direction here right so in the area must, uh, must to be oriented in the maximum direction where the circulation is maximum the area must be present in the uh, area where the circulation should be maximum right let us see the curl vector this is nothing but divergence zero divergence and this is nothing but rotational so this rotational is called curl of a vector it is nothing but maximum value of circulation of field per unit area right it indicates the direction where the maximum value occurs and uh, it may be recorded as a measure of circulation how much field is around here in a particular point around a particular point so if the vector has no rotation means that is zero curl and if that particular value rotate means that is called curl of a particular vector so for curl you will have a stokes theorem and for uh, del you will have a divergence theorem here we will see it is nothing but curl of a particular vector that is called a del cross a right and if you have if you take surface integral of that particular vector okay that will be equal to line integral of that particular vector that is called a stokes theorem okay we can say from the equation itself what is the definition here you see stokes theorem states that the circulation of a vector field around a closed path so this is particular important in stokes theorem we will see the closed line and for the divergence theorem we see the closed surface right closed to path is equal to the surface integral of curl of a open the surface here provided 
the curl a continuous on s okay now we have to see the formula of curl in three coordinate system here you see in cartesian coordinate system what is uh, the formula and for cylindrical coordinate system what is the formula and in spherical coordinate system what is the formula three different formulas are given here here for a x a y a z dou divided by dou x dou divided by dou y dou divided by dou z here rho dou divided by dou rho rho into a phi dou divided by dou phi a z dou divided by dou z finally the unit vector is here a rho rho a phi a z so these are the formulas which will help you to find a curl of a vector in three different coordinate systems okay next we will see the laplacian laplacian is one operator right for uh, we can find a vector okay if you see a scalar field we will take scalar laplacian for that particular scalar field is nothing but del square b we have already seen the formula for del dot b now we have to multiply by another del to that particular divergence okay here you see del square v equal to del okay dot del v del v we have already known in addition to that one we have to multiply one more del so here you see there is one particular del there is nothing but del v okay. this is called laplacian of a scalar field okay and uh, the formula for in three different coordinate systems are given here for cartesian coordinate system this is the formula for uh, cylindrical coordinate system this is the formula finally for the spherical coordinate system this is the formula okay and uh, now the del operator value and then some observations are given here right here let us see the first one gradient of a scalar function is a vector quantity that means if you take a gradient of a scalar a field f okay that will give you the result is nothing but a vector quantity scalar which will not have magnitude and the result okay gradient of that particular thing is nothing but a vector and this reverse one divergence of a vector will give you scalar quantity that means divergence of a vector means del dot a and the result will be a scalar quantity scalar quantity means it will have only magnitude and uh, no direction and the third one curl of a vector is a vector quantity curl of a vector is nothing but del cross a right and then the result which is nothing but a vector that will both have magnitude and direction finally the laplacian of the scale or del square a simply the formula is given okay these are three important observations and uh, if you find a gradient or divergence or a curl for any vector right you can verify the result okay by using this observations whether we did that particular operation for that particular vector is right or not classification of a vector field is given here that means if you take del dot a for this particular field it will be zero and if we take curl del cross a that is also zero for this particular field if a particular field is given like this we can simply say the divergence and the curl for that particular vector is zero if you have uh, a field like this right if you take the curl as well as the divergence you see here del dot a is not equal to zero whereas the curl del cross a is equal to zero these are two important observations right okay and uh, the other type of is for this particular field del dot a that is divergence is zero and the curl del cross a is not zero and for this particular field also del dot a divergence is zero and the curl del cross a is not equal to zero okay let us uh, summarize the things what we have seen uh, so far initially we have started with what is electromagnetic field right and uh, what is the importance of electromagnetic field in uh, different types of applications 
and some practical applications like uh, 15 applications are given here, right? Those devices will uh, work under the electromagnetic principle and uh, the different coordinate systems which are used in electromagnetic field, right, are listed here. If you even have 11 to 12 coordinate system here, eight coordinate systems are given, only three coordinate systems are mainly used. So only we have to concentrate only on partition, circular and spherical, right? And how to represent a point in each coordinate system and what are the limits, okay, in each coordinate system are explained. Right, and uh, the three formulas differential length, differential surface, and differential value uh, three formulas are given separately for each coordinate system. And the transformation first transformation is point how to convert a point from one coordinate system to the other. The formulas are uh, given and uh, properly explained. And the second type of transformation is nothing but the vector. How to convert a vector from one coordinate system to the other coordinate system is given here. And uh, the two operators, first operator we see is nothing but uh, del, right? And for each coordinate system, we have uh, given the formulas. And uh, this is nothing but one particular operation. There's nothing but gradient of scalar and all the formulas are given where we multiple the V with that uh, del. That uh, V is called a uh, gradient. And the next one is the other operation, divergence, one formula is given. And uh, the two theorems, the theorem related with divergence is given here. And uh, different types of divergence are explained positive, negative, and zero. And next one is nothing but the curl is nothing but the rotation of a vector in which the field will have the maximum value, right? And the difference is given here. What is curl if you call means rotational? So if the lines are like this, it is zero. And if it rotates, it is nothing but rotation. Next, uh, the theorem associated with curl, which is nothing but Stokes theorem. And uh, the one thing, I will tell you again, the surface must be uh, uh, close to one for divergence as well as for the stroke scale. And here, the formulas for curl in three coordinate systems are given. Next one is the Laplacian operation, right? Uh, the gradient we have seen formally, and if you take del for that particular thing, there is nothing but Laplacian. And the formula for three coordinate system for Laplacian operation are given here and some observations for gradient divergence and curl are given here. Here some particular fields are given for which especially the divergence and the curl values are explained. Right. Thank you for listening to me peacefully. I will see you in the next session. So thank you so much.